Summertime is beach time. The water can be refreshing, but in recent years, you hear more and more about swim advisories where water quality is not healthy or it's even dangerous to people. Well, this is not the scene you want in the middle of the summer. It is prime beach season, but it's not unusual on the Gulf Coast to find a beach deserted. There are two issues in the water that can clear a beach, even though you might not be able to see them. One is high bacteria levels. The other is harmful blooms of algae. Algae is natural in bodies of water around the world. When it grows out of control, it is known as an algal bloom. Algal blooms use up the oxygen and water. They can change the color and the smell of it, and they can also be toxic to people, fish, shellfish, marine life, and animals. These are known as harmful algal blooms. Increased nutrients enter the water, especially nitrogen and phosphorus, which largely come from agriculture and from our individual lawns. Rainwater runs off to carry these into rivers, lakes, bays, and oceans. It happens locally and regionally. This photo from the International Space Station shows the runoff in the Mississippi River Basin into the Gulf of Mexico. In some months of the year, it is tens and tens of thousands of tons of sediment, excess nitrates, phosphorus, and wastewater. Every year, this creates an area of low oxygen in the water in the northern Gulf. That's called hypoxia, or a dead zone. NOAA predicts a record large dead zone in the Gulf for the summer of 2019 due to extreme central United States flooding that happened in the spring. Algal blooms hurt ecosystems and the economy, especially related to tourism and the seafood industry. Waterfront properties can lose value and communities may have to spend millions to remedy the problem. In 2018, we heard a lot about red tide in Florida. That was a harmful algal bloom that was toxic. It led to a large fish kill. It entered the air to cause breathing issues and irritate the eyes of people who didn't even get in the water. Aside from harmful algal blooms, our other issue is bacteria that enters our waters, mostly from runoff that carries fecal matter. That's doo-doo. Or poop. Poop from livestock. Poop from pets. Poop from wildlife. But also poop in wastewater and from sewage overflows. And even from diapers that are not properly disposed of. All of these increase with population, development, and infrastructure that just can't keep up. These bacteria can cause rashes, irritate your eyes and throat, make you sick, cause infections, and threaten the health of people with compromised immune systems. When toxic, the bacteria can have neurological impact. Maybe the worst case of bacteria is known as flesh-eating bacteria. We are a part of the cause of poor water quality, but how bad it gets is also related to the environment and atmosphere. Well, there is no doubt that weather plays a role in biological processes, that is sunshine and heat. But talk about the wind. If you have a wind that's blowing from the land toward the water, it can actually stir things up from beneath, whether it's bacteria or algae, and cause higher levels at the beaches. On the other hand, if you have a wind that's blowing from the water toward the land, it can actually concentrate things right along the coastline. While rain runoff is a big deal in all of this, here are things you can do to limit both of these from happening. Decrease runoff by minimizing pavement and other impervious surfaces on your property. Use a car wash or, at home, wash your vehicle on grass. Always clean up after your pet and avoid walking them in areas where rainwater would quickly run into bodies of water. Pump out your septic system regularly. Reduce energy usage since the creation of it can increase phosphorus as a byproduct. Use soaps and cleaners that are low or free of phosphates. 
reduce the use of fertilizers on your property, and don't blow your grass clippings into the street. Be aware of water conditions. Do a web search for beach swim water quality and add the state or location. On the Central Gulf Coast, you'll find Florida has a site called Florida Healthy Beaches Program with interactive maps for coastal and inland locations. Mississippi has a similar website called Beach Monitoring Program where you can click on each beach for details of water quality. There's also an online beach monitoring program for coastal Alabama from the Alabama Department of Environmental Management. Mobile Baykeeper is an affiliate of Swim Guide. That's a website that shows water quality for a large part of the United States. After you check online, use basic swim health rules. Don't swim if you have breaks in your skin like open cuts or sores. Avoid swimming near stormwater drainage pipes. Rinse off or wash up after swimming. I'm meteorologist Alan Seals.